Maybe you've been leading your group all alone for a while now and you'd love to have someone else alongside you, a fellow encourager, someone else who's intentionally thinking about the well-being of your group. Or maybe you've got a co-leader who, for whatever reason, is just feeling like he needs some time away from the responsibility of being a leader. Here's the question. How do you find another co-leader? Well, in this episode of Level Up, we're going to talk about finding a co-leader, but more than that, we're going to talk about how to create a co-leader culture. So let's dive in. Hey guys, I'm Steve, and this is Level Up, the monthly dose of leadership training that will help you take your next level group to the next level. The truth is, your group is gonna be better off if two people are sharing the leadership role, and here's why. One leader brings his individual gifts to the table, but co-leaders have double the gifts to serve the group with, and often those gifts complement each other. One leader is gonna have some ideas, but Two leaders, co-leaders, can bounce ideas off each other to come up with a better end result. One leader can see things happening in the group, certain things, when a co-leader will see things that the first person doesn't actually see. Often a leader can feel like they are in it alone, uh, and a co-leader can be a source of encouragement to that person to help the first leader know that, that he's not in it alone, that there's a camaraderie there. I think you get the idea. Co-leadership is better than leading solo. But finding a co-leader if you don't have one is really easier said than done. Now, why is that? Well, I think most guys feel like they just can't do it. They can't be a leader. Maybe they feel inadequate spiritually, like who am I to lead other men when I don't even have my own life figured out? Or maybe they feel like they have no gifts, like what could I even bring to the table if I was a leader? Or maybe they're scared to make a mistake, to mess the group up, to hurt others, to be seen as a failure. Or maybe it's practical, maybe they just feel like they don't have the time. With all this in the way, how do you as a current leader find a co-leader? And more than that, how do you create that co-leader culture that we've started to talk about? where you actually have people waiting in the wing, ready to step into the role of leader when called upon. Well, first let's talk about creating that co-leader culture, and then we're gonna talk about the specifics of actually approaching somebody to invite them to co-lead alongside you. Here's the reality. The people in your group need to believe they can lead before they will decide to become a co-leader. So you need to be the one to give them the opportunity to begin to believe that they can actually lead. This is how you create that co-leader culture. Here's step one. Take a piece of paper, write the names of each guy at the top of that paper, uh, kind of in columns, and then take that sheet of paper to prayer. Ask God to help bring to mind this person's skills. Think in three categories, spiritual skills, practical skills, and relational skills. And as God shows you the gifting that each person might have, write those things down and then move on to the next person. Step two, look at your sheet of paper that's now filled out with skills and gifts for each person. And, and now you can consider what leadership role matches those skills. For example, maybe Caleb is well respected by the group and, and he's really well spoken. He's a great guy to pray to start the group off. Or maybe David is really administratively organized. He's the guy that needs to be sending the follow-up emails to the group after each meeting. Or John, who's super relationally astute, uh, Bring John out for a cup of coffee, talk about the group's relational health, and give him a primary role in moving that relational health forward. The key is this, don't give them all the responsibility and the title of group leader all at once. That's overwhelming. Rather, give them a starter responsibility and build on that. Here's a note, don't just give a role to the guys who rise to the surface as potential future leaders. Give a role to every single member of the group according to their maturity and their gifting. You need to think more like a manager of all trades than a jack of all trades, more like a player coach. Um, really what you need to think is how do I delegate to the guys in the group to help them participate according to their abilities. Step three, encourage, assess, and follow up. Make it your goal during and in between every group meeting to encourage when something's done well. Acknowledge the achievements that you see in each group member. Sometimes it's appropriate to even do this publicly in front of the rest of the group. 
assess where things are working and if something is not working well then follow up with the person and help them to succeed the next time step four is a little tougher identify a couple of members of the group that you think might be potential future co-leaders once you've identified those guys uh, give them a role, a task, a responsibility that might be a little bit outside of their comfort zone. Allow them to step into something that might stretch them relationally or spiritually or practically. Once you allow them to step into that role, it's your job now to help them succeed. Give them everything that they need and encourage them heavily along the way. It's your job to walk alongside them, pray for them, and then celebrate them when they do succeed. As you do each of these four steps, you'll be leading and building up a culture of co-leadership. Each man in the group will feel that he has a role and ownership in the group and for the group. Now that you've developed the culture, it's time to make the ask. As you prayerfully consider who to ask, think about the three C's, character, competency, and chemistry. First character, does the person that you're considering have the character and maturity to serve in the co-leader role? Second, competency. Does the person that you're considering have the practical, spiritual, and relational gifts to serve the group well? And does this person's gift actually complement yours well? Third is chemistry. Is this person well respected by the group? Is there any friction between them and other members of the group? Is the person someone that people will honor and encourage as a group leader? Now, as you think through these things, remember not to fall into perfection paralysis. Perfection paralysis is when you're so caught up looking for the perfect person that you can't see the imperfect person in front of you that God may be calling into the role. You're not looking for a perfect co-leader. You, you are not a perfect co-leader either. You're looking for someone who has a heart to serve, is respected by the people in the group, and has demonstrated an ability to help. Now, you want to invite this person out for a coffee and spend some time encouraging them in the roles that they've played. And then you want to confidently let them know that you believe that they're the right person to co-lead alongside you. Invite them to consider the role seriously and let them know what the role entails. If you've created a healthy co-leader culture, the role shouldn't be much more than what they're already doing. Ask them to try out this, this role for three months and then propose that you would meet again after three months to discuss how it's going. Share with them that you really feel this is a great way that they can contribute and invest in the well-being of each person in the group, and then confidently leave the decision with them. They could say no. If they do, that's okay, but make sure you ask them why. Maybe they've got some hesitancies that you'll be able to address and maybe even dispel. Now, finding the right co-leader is not an easy task, but if you actively create a co-leader culture and then confidently pursue the right person, it is an achievable task. The final item when pursuing a co-leader is don't do it alone. <laughs> Let us know at Next Level how we can pray for you and how the process of creating that co-leader culture is going. We want to walk alongside you throughout the process. Thanks so much for watching this video. Group leaders, we love you. We appreciate your investment in your group week in and week out. You are on the front line of the battle for people's hearts. Remember that you can do far more abundantly than all that you can ask or even think according to the Holy Spirit's power that is at work within you. You have that power available to you as you lead your group each week. Next month on Level Up, we're talking about what a next level group is and what a next level group is not. We're going to talk about the weekly, monthly, and yearly rhythms that should be involved in a next level group that are going to allow you and your group to consistently grow in Christ-likeness. Hope to see you then. Thanks so much.